Hello and welcome back. In this video, we will be looking at how to configure an access point on Microtik as well as the various options on the device, as well as setting up a wireless client to an access point. So let's dive into the video. Alrighty, so I've got two physical pieces of equipment that I'm going to lab with. I've actually got the 951 um, that I'm going to set up as an access point that we've done a lot of labbing with on previous videos. And then I've got a small little um, HAP Mini that I actually got from a mum earlier this year or last year even. Wow, time flies. Um, that we'll be setting up as an access point client. So I'm going to just maximize the AP so that we can actually get into the configuration. So if we want to look at the wireless, we can actually just click on this wireless button and this gives us all of the wireless options that we can work with. So we can set up wireless interfaces or enable them, um, but this is disabled by default if you're running the default configuration or no default configuration. With default configuration, it will be enabled, but it might be bridged with all of your LAN interfaces. But this wireless tables gives you all of the different tabs that you can go into. And we'll go into a lot of these tabs to set up additional config um, to show you how everything works. But for the most part, you just need to understand there is the wireless interfaces. And I've got a WLAN interface on this Microtech. And it actually shows us the type. And what this type is, it means the wireless card that's actually running on the Microtech. Because each card is obviously different. It might have different antennas or different chains, or can it, it has more throughput or less throughput, or it can operate at different bands. And th that, that is why the type is actually very important. But let me just enable this wireless interface. So I've got a WLAN 1 interface now. I can double click on it and we can treat this like an ethernet interface. It's just able to broadcast frames wirelessly. So it does have a MAC address, it can do ARP and people will actually connect onto this wireless interface or this WLAN interface when it's set up as an access point. So right now this interface is just searching for something. <laughs> it's just searching. So let's try and set something up by going onto the wireless tab. And then if I click here, we can see there are different modes that you can set up. Now, the modes that I would say that's most relevant to us would be the AP, um, AP bridge, bridge, station, and even station bridge. All of these other interfaces, they have their uses as well. But primarily, I want you to focus on uh, the AP bridge and bridge, as well as the station and station bridge. The reason I'm calling this out is the AP bridge is actually where you put your Microtik in an AP mode so that different clients can connect to it. Whereas if you just set it to the bridge mode, that means a single client can connect to it to form a bridge and it will still work as an access point, but this is more for just bridging a connection. So we're going to use the AP bridge for the access point. And now from here, we can actually select a band. So we can say at which speeds would we like to operate? How, how much frequency can we use? So I'm going to set this for two gigahertz G slash n because i know that will give me the most throughput but actually let's set it for bgn for older devices that might want to connect that can't use g or n but they might have b available to them all right if i had an additional card on this microtech there might have been a wlan 2 and it might have operated at 5 gigahertz and then we'd be able to set those options for 5 gigahertz okay now we can set the channel width which just means how big the channel is that we're broadcasting so that people can connect. And the higher we set this, the more throughput we can get. Typically it will be at 20 megahertz. Uh, but if you want to set it to like 20 slash 40, you can do that. But note that it can cause instability on the wireless network. So if your channel is too big, it might run into more interference and then people will maybe have some speed issues. But let's leave it on 20 megahertz for this test. And now we can set the frequency. Now you can see we get various different frequencies that we can set our um, band to. Uh, you can think of these just as the channel. So this first one is channel one, and this increments by five. So I know channel one is typically a clean channel. So one, three, four, five, six is also typically a ch clean channel. So we could use that, or we could use 11. So two, four, six, two. So these are the channels we might use to connect. I'll just leave this on the default channel, which is channel one, uh, but you could set it to auto and the Microtech would try and find the channel that's the cleanest to connect to, that doesn't have as much interference, so just to give you some better performance. But let me just set that to 2412 for our demonstration. 
now we've got an SSID. Now this is important because this is the SSID that the MicroTik will broadcast out that clients can connect to. When clients scan for a wireless network, they'll be able to see the SSID, be it on their computer or on a different MicroTik, and they'd be able to select that SSID to connect with. So let's maybe make this uh, TNB uh, dash Wi-Fi. Security profile. So if I look at those tabs at the back, there's actually a security profile there. And this is where you can set the password details for clients trying to connect. So we will update that in a second as well. So I'll leave this on default and we can change the default one, but you can create custom profiles. It doesn't always need to be the default uh, profile. We get a WPS mode. So this is if you want to basically have a button on the MicroTik to enable certain features, you can push this to turn on WPS. Um, but I'm not going to tweak anything here. I'm going to leave this as default. And now we get some important information as well. So we've got a frequency mode, which is the regulatory domain. So if we look at the frequencies that we can connect to, um, if you select this for regulatory domain, this will basically look at which frequencies are acceptable in your country to you. So if I set, set my country, I'll, I'll set this to South Africa because that's where I'm from. But if you're in a different country, I do recommend setting your country so that the frequencies for your country will be acceptable so that you can use those frequencies. If you just leave it, um, you know, <laughs> if you just leave it blank, then you might use the wrong frequencies and you might get into trouble. But I'm, if you put your country and you put the regulatory domain, which is default, you'll, you should be fine when it comes to frequency. Now we can also change the frequency mode by manual TX power, super channel or the regulatory domain. If we do the manual TX power, we can actually also set the power for the MicroTik, how strong it can broadcast the signal out. But this can also potentially cause issues. So I don't want to say don't do it. Uh, if you leave it on the defaults, everything should work fine. But if you have a requirement, maybe the AP is a bit further away from the clients than usual, then you can tweak up the power a little bit just to get that signal out a bit further um, and then also just provide more bandwidth. But um, we'll, we'll look at that in a second. All right, and this is actually very basic what you can do to set up as an access point. Now I'd like us to go through a few of the other uh, tabs and such before we apply the configuration. All right, so let's look at the other tabs that we get. And what I'd like you to focus on first is when we're in our wireless interface, there's actually an advanced mode that you can go into. Now this advanced mode is really, really important because it allows you to see additional features and functions on your MicroTik as well. Because if I leave it in the simple mode, you see there's not a lot of stuff that I can change here. But if I do advanced mode, we get some additional uh, info. So I could even change the radio name so that other clients, when they scan for the network and they see the radio name, they might see something else. So I might make this TMB now as well. Um, we've got additional stuff like the wireless protocol that we can set. So we can leave it as any, or it can be 802.11. And then you get stuff called Nstream. So Nstream is more or less a MicroTik proprietary protocol. I won't say that, that you can't use it, Maybe if you want to use it, use NV2 Nstream and 802.11 or leave it on any. But what NV2 Nstream or Nstream allows you to do is it, MicroTik bypasses some of the stuff from 802.11 just to increase throughput a little bit, but this is only functional between MicroTik to MicroTik. If you're going to use Nstream, you can't use it from a MicroTik to let's say Ubiquiti dish or something, it's not going to work. But I'll put it on as NV2 Nstream 802.11 for this. And now we can set uh, a few additional stuff here. You can also say is the installation, is it indoor or outdoor? Obviously, if it's indoor, it's probably an AP that's in a room somewhere. If it's outdoor, it might be you having a wireless point-to-point -point link or something that you want to uh, connect with. But I'll put this as indoor because this is where it is. And then we can set some additional stuff like VLAN tags and service tags and whatnot. But this is what happens when you click on the advanced button. But not only does more stuff appear in the wireless section, there's actually additional tabs that come up as well. Now, the data rates, you can also manually configure them. You can set which speeds are supported. So let's say people connect with uh, B, so 802.11B. We can actually say, okay, everybody connects at that can only get 11 megabits. But that can potentially cause issues as well because if there is some signal issue, uh, maybe they might experience packet loss if they're all just connecting at the fastest speed. Uh, then we've got this HT tab, which is basically showing you the chains that's on your MicroTik. So this is effectively the, think of this as the antennas that's on the MicroTik that's sending and receiving signals. So chain zero and chain one can, can transmit 
and chain zero, chain one can also receive on each respective chain. So I've got basically two um, polarizing, uh, let's say, antennas. Even though there's no antenna on the MicroTik, it's just how the card operates. So there's two chains on this specific model. If you have a different model, because this can vary from MicroTik to MicroTik, you might see more uh, chains, which would then again allow you for more throughput. Because if you've got like this this beast of a router, it doesn't even need to be a router board. It can be an just an access point. You know, it could be a, a dish or something. It, it can have like 20 antennas and it looks like a monster from, it looks like the Loch Ness monster or a dragon or something. And this thing is just so beefy. And if it connects to another device that also supports that type of uh, connectivity, you can definitely see a bit more uh, throughput um, <laughs> with that. Um, I'd like us to go just to the end stream as well. So here you can go to actually enable end stream. You can also disable the CSMA, um, which it's, I don't know if that's really a good thing to do, but you can typically do that just to uh, stop checking for collisions effectively. Now we can also set the TX power, as I mentioned. So if I set this to manual, I can actually say how much power I want to allocate. And like I said, if you want to push a bit harder, this is how you can do it. But again, do this maybe at your own discretion or risk because you can potentially pop something if if you tweak the power incorrectly. Um, here's our current TX power tab. So this just shows us what's currently running, what's currently been set. So I'm just going to set this back to the default. And now I can see our status and traffic. So status, it works just like your normal Ethernet interfaces. You can see if an interface is up or down or what's happening with it. And then it, your traffic is just a traffic graph. So you can see how much traffic is actually going over it. Okay, so that clears up all of the different tabs and settings and such that we can tweak and tune. So let's actually get the access point up and running. All right, so I was happy with the configuration how it was, so I'll just apply this. And then what I'd like to do is just go into our security profiles and then I'm going to set a password because we need to also set a mode. I might say we want to use dynamic keys and then I could say we're going to use WPA PSK. So this is the original version, but you can set it for WPA2, PSK. M maybe let's set it for that. And now we can set a pre-shared key. So I'm gonna make this something very default. And I think you need to make this eight characters, but let's see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I've made it a very basic password. I do recommend you make your password a bit more secure, but now we can apply this. And now we've got a username or a password that people can actually use to authenticate with. So. <laughs> this covers the access point portion. Let's quickly go to our client. So I'm going to minimize this and go back to my client, which is this little HAP Mini. And I'm going to go to my wireless tab here. And here I've got my WLAN interface. I can enable this. And now that this has been enabled, I'm going to double click on this. Actually, before we do that, let's go to our security profiles. And from here, I also just want to set a password quickly. So one, two, because this is where I'm specifying the password now that's going to be used to connect to the access point. All right, let's go back to our Wi-Fi interfaces. I'll double click on the interface, go to my wireless, and now I've got options to set it to station or station bridge. I'm going to set this to station bridge so that we could potentially bridge the connection later on in another video, but um, this is how you can set it to station bridge. Station is effectively just a client. This is just a, a, a host connecting wirelessly to another access point but I'm gonna make mine station bridge. Now we can select which band do we wanna connect that. So I did say two gigahertz B, G, and N. So that's what I'm gonna select. We did have it as 20 megahertz. Our frequency, this was channel one. Our SSID, so this is important. I have no clue what it was. I can't remember what it was. So Microtech actually has a very nice feature where we can click on this little scan button. And if I scan the wireless network, I can actually pick up, I can pick up, there is a wireless device here. It's called TMB Wi Fi. That's the channel it's on. This is the signal strength. There's a radio name. This is so cool. I love the scanner. And if I hover over that, we can actually see it's active. It's uh, running router OS. Uh, it's TDMA and it's bridge. Okay, so I'm just going to select that and then I'm going to click connect. So now that I've clicked connect to that, if I go back here, we can actually see it's put in the TMB Wi Fi there. And that's it, that's how easy it is. I've got my security profile selected already. So I'll just apply that. And I could see in the background, it actually already connected. There was that little R there. So I can see this exit or this client is connecting to my AP. I know for a fact this is working. And if I go to my IP neighbors, I can actually see the WLAN has a connection to 
my router board. And if I go back to the access point, just to verify the connection, if I go to my registration, I can actually see the clients that have registered, that have connected. And there I can see this client has connected and this is the data rate it currently has. So don't think that is just what it is. It just kind of changes depending on what the TCP windowing is doing. So if I try and push traffic across the network, we might definitely see this push a bit higher. Let's actually do that because right now I've only got layer two working. So again, wireless in its own, it's a layer two concept. It's frames from wireless cards being broadcasted to each other over radio frequency. So if I go to my interfaces, it's just an interface. But right now I don't have any IP addressing configured on either device. So let's add device or IPs to our WLAN interfaces. So let's make it something very basic, 172.16.0.1. I'll just put it as a slash 30. Actually, let's, let's make that a big, nice slash 24 network because maybe we'll add some more access points to play around with later. And our interface is WLAN1. I'll apply that and I'll go to my client. And remember, you can do this with DHCP as well. You can set up a DHCP server, uh, set the WLAN interface as the server. <laughs> let's actually do that. Let's do that. We, we, we don't even need to uh, worry about this. So let's go back to our AP. And let's set up DHCP quickly. So I'm going to do IP, DHCP server. Let's run the wizard, so it's very quick. I'll select WLAN as my interface. There's my address range, network, pool. Let's add the DNS servers 8.8.8.8. .8 and now I've got a DHCP server running. Now let's just quickly add a DHCP client on our AP. So I'll go into my IP, DHCP client. I'll set this up against my WLAN one. I'll add a default route out. And there we can see I've obtained the IP address of 172.16.0.254 and dot one should be my gateway. So let's just check our status, that is correct. And if I ping across the MicroTix now, so this is from MicroTix from client one to AP one over the wireless. So if I ping 192, sorry, <laughs> wrong IP, 172.16.0.1, I actually see I've got three milliseconds latency, which is quite nice. That's actually not bad for wireless. Um, but let's do something that's actually going to test the connection. So from the client, I'm just going to run a quick bandwidth test to 172.16.0.1. And I'll make it, let's make it UDP. TCP won't drop any packets, so we might not see a true reflection. And let's start this test. Sorry, I, I forgot to set the user as admin. Now we should connect. And now we can see the bandwidth is starting to go across. So there's some six, seven me me uh, megabits, but we can see this is going to climb. And if I jump back to my AP and I look at my registration, we can see the radio at which frequency or which band it's actually running. So how much bandwidth we're actually pushing across now. So that's quite nice. Uh, <laughs> I really enjoy this. And let's just check our um, traffic on the interface itself. So here's the interface monitor. So this is how the bandwidth is being pushed. This is our TX and RX. So this looks good. I'm quite happy with this. We've set up a very basic access point as well as client. And in the next lectures, we'll do some more advanced stuff as well, play around with some in stream stuff and look at all of the other tabs that we went through earlier. So thanks for watching and catch you in the next video. Bye.